lovelies. Happy Wednesday. Today. <laughs> hey there, lovelies. Happy Wednesday. I'm here with my mom and my sister. Hey there, lovelies. Happy Wednesday. I'm Caroline from A Meaningful Blog. Today, I'm here with my mom and my sister to talk about my most recent heart surgery, which was on Wednesday, August 12th, 2012. At the time, I was healthy for me, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. I don't remember having any problems. You were cardiac stable. I did a pacer check, which I have a video talking about on my IGTV, so that will be linked below. So I did a pacer check that morning before we went on vacation, and then we went on vacation and we left the house, and what happened? My mom got a call from her doctor. From my doctor, saying what? It was a call from your cardiologist, Dr. Ty, and I was in a really excited mood. I was happy we were going to Michigan. I was being silly, and I for some reason thought he was calling and wish us a happy vacation. <laughs> and he wasn't. Had he ever done that before? No. <laughs> Why? So what did he say? So he said no, he wasn't calling to wish us a happy vacation. <laughs> Instead he was calling to tell me that one of your leads was not capturing, which means that your lead was broken and there was no um, electrical uh, current getting to your heart and pacing your heart. So the lead from my pacemaker to my heart. From the generator, which is the battery, which has electricity to your heart. Yeah. Which makes it uh, beat. Beat. <laughs> makes it do the heart thing. Instead of going on vacation that day, we came back home and we went to the doctor's office. Yay! Wasn't that so much fun? It was lots of fun. <laughs> so what happened? I don't, I seriously don't remember anything. I remember we were in the car. You answered the phone. I thought somebody died. And then you said lead. And I was like, oh, that's not it. And then we turned around. And then there was pizza. And then pizza. So, and then we went to the doctor's office and met dad there. So we were about three miles from home on our way for vacation. But Dr. Ty asked us to come see him that afternoon. Fortunately, you are not pacemaker dependent at this stage. You do need your pacemaker to keep your heart happy. So we turned around, we got back to the house, took the bikes off the van because you can't really drive into a parking deck at the hospital with bikes on the van. Drove down and saw Dr. Ty. He did a pacemaker interrogation to see what was going on. To An interrogation? Yes, that's... I've never heard that word. Oh. Well, I've never mean, heard, heard the word, word, but never that phrase. They, yes, they check your pacemaker. They can get more information that way than they can over the telephone checks. Yeah. And it confirmed that your lead was broken, and it had um, even the date that it was broken. And the time. Um, and the time. I was learning how to do backflips in a pool on Memorial Day. I've never done one since. <laughs> Like I said, you're not pacemaker dependent at this point. It's over long term where your heart starts to go, starts to get into heart failure if it's out of rhythm. I have an underlying rhythm then. You do. But it's not good. It's out of sync, yes. Okay. And it's very low. Okay. The last time I remember, I think your underlying rate was like 40. Is that good oh. or bad? That's really low. This was not the first time that I have done a pacer, that you have had a pacer check done by telephone and have gotten information that your pacemaker wasn't capturing. The first time it happened, you were a tot, no, you were a preschooler, and I did a pacer check on you. Those were horrible. And I <laughs> was, was getting ready the big to... phone? Yeah, the big phone and the metal bracelets that oh, I loved that phone. killed people. I was getting ready to go present a paper for my master's degree, and I got the phone call from the nurse that you, that your pacemaker wasn't capturing. Didn't you find out I had a heart defect when you had like a big presentation at work too? I did. Yeah. That sucks. You really have interrupted my life a lot. Been, Oops. You really have been <laughs> quite the inconvenience. <laughs> we were at the doctor's appointment. Yes, it confirmed your lead was broken. Yes, we needed to replace the lead. And they decided that, you know, might as well replace the generator because that was going to run out probably in the next 18 months. But we really wanted to go on vacation. We really wanted so we to have a vacation. quality of life because it was summer and swimming. And usually if you have the incision, they don't like you to go swimming because of risk of infection. You can't do anything for two weeks. You can't even put your hands above your head. And Which is way hard. Okay. Never thought of that. Wait. Can you do it now? Yeah, 
I can. But like for two weeks after you have surgery, you can't oh. put your hands above your head. So like other people have to do your hair. And or you can just really stand on your hair. So do you know why that is? Why you can't put your hands above your head? Because it's attached to your heart and you'll pull on your heart and then you'll have another surgery. <laughs> That's what I remember. Your sternum is healing. Your bones are healing. Oh, yeah. We went on vacation like normal and then I went to dance camp at the end of vacation. Well, not quite like normal because I think we had to do like pacer checks while we were there. Did we? I think so. Oh. I just remember the stairs at the lodge were really hard. They're always really hard. But they were harder than normal. And I went to dance camp because I made the dance team and we had to go to camp for a week to learn the dances. And that was really important to me and going to the first day of school was really important to me. So on the third day of school, I missed the third day of school and then I missed the next two weeks. I was supposed to miss Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Then go back to school on Monday. Yeah. And that didn't happen. Why didn't that happen? Because he cracked my sternum, right? Right. So my pacemaker is here. And when we met with the surgeon at my pre-op appointment, he said he was going to try to get the lead done through this incision. He also talked about possibly doing an incision on my back, but that didn't happen. He was not able to reach... A good spot because your leads are on the outside of your heart they're not on most pacemaker leads go through veins or arteries I forget which one and yours to the inside of the heart but your leads are on the outside of the heart and he couldn't find a good surface spot to screw them in and so he had to crack your your lower part of your sternum to get access I thought they to were your heart so non. they're like little um, little coils oh okay. and then they're stitched like a quick Okay. Little. Why are my leads on the surface of my heart instead of inside? Um, again, I'm not a cardiologist, but it's my understanding because of your anatomy. Oh, okay, cool. So the day of the surgery, we went to the hospital and met my dad there, and I went into a pre-op room where I met with the surgeon, a nurse, an anesthesiologist. Was there anybody else medical-wise? Probably. Okay. I remember there was one nurse who said she wasn't going to stick me because of my veins. That was exciting. So they didn't give me an IV until I was out. And then the deacon came in to pray before the surgery and then somebody came to wheel me down to the OR and I was really upset because I was 13 but also I had a ponytail holder on my wrist and I was very worried about that for some reason. Like, I remember that. that losing it or that it was on your wrist? <laughs> I was like, I don't know if I should have this on my wrist. What should I do with it? And then he took it and he's like, we'll give it back to you. And I never got it back. And I remember <laughs> it so vividly. I got into the OR and there were a lot of people there. They were all really, really nice because, I mean, I feel like I've always had really good OR people. But I don't also, I also don't remember the OR for any other surgeries. But I remember they sat me up and then started putting really cold stickers on my back. Wait, like stickers, like like Dora stickers? No, like stickers for like to monitor. wire. Yeah. Oh. And I didn't understand why they were on my back, but I also didn't care anymore. They asked me to pick what music I wanted to listen to, and I was 13, so I really wanted to listen to Justin Bieber. And <laughs> half of the people got really mad, and then I was like, okay, I really like country music too. And then the other half of the people got really mad, so then they played Boyfriend by Justin Bieber because it just came out that spring. That Wait, happened. Like, do they play it the whole time? And they just jam out with, with a knife inside I know. you? Oh. I can be a boyfriend, boyfriend. <laughs> so. I know that some surgeons listen to music, but I don't know if they listen to any there. My surgeon told me that I had to sing because I picked the music, so they put the mask on me. I wanted a bubblegum flavored mask that they put on to like knock you out but they didn't have that, so I got like raspberry. And the surgeon said that I had to sing because I picked the music, so I remember falling asleep as I was singing Boyfriend by Justin Bieber. And then I woke up and- I think you woke up screaming. Wait, no, do you like I don't dream? remember screaming. Okay. No, you don't. Like you're just like black? All I remember is I fought really hard to close my, to fall asleep and then the next second I was awake and mom was to my left leaning against 
the window to my bedroom, to my bedroom, <laughs> to my hospital room. And she was in her Michigan State uh, zip up. Like you don't even like, like you just fall asleep and then you wake up the next second. Yeah. That's cool. It's weird. I have no idea where my dad was. He was somewhere around, but I didn't, I've never paid attention to where he is. <laughs> Sorry, dad. So I saw mom and then I blacked out again. And then I remember rolling back and forth. But when I remembered it the first time, I thought it was a dream. But then you said it wasn't. I was just rolling back and forth on the bed. <laughs> yes. And I remember my dad. He was like in his work clothes, like office clothes. And he leaned forward and he goes, should she be doing that? <laughs> and our nurse friend was like, like yeah, it's probably fine because she's on a nerve blocker. But... So, as long as she's not in pain, it's fine. But maybe we should put up the bed rails. So you don't fall off. So I didn't fall out of the bed. So, yeah. That's really all that I remember from that day. I know I asked how long I was out because I don't... I've always kind of been like that. I don't like accidentally falling asleep and then waking up and it being a different time. So I asked how long I was out and Dad said it was like almost four hours. Sounds right. I don't know. Okay. I don't remember. <laughs> Sorry. These are very important details, Mom. I remember seeing you. That day? Yeah. Did they really? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I was... I wanted to watch TV, but Mommy said no. I don't remember what else happened, like, over the next few days. You were in a lot of pain because your... Because, like I said earlier, the surgeon had to open you up more... That he had planned and probably manipulate your body more. So I think you're kind of bruised and beat up. Coming out of surgery, you had a reaction to some pain meds that you had taken before, oh, but yeah. because you were a teenager, sometimes your reactions change to medicine because your body is changing. So you started to itch <laughs> and you kind of had like hives or a rash kind I of remember going on. Screaming. So they were trying to give you Benadryl, and they cut your pain meds. I thought but you were just going to cut her. <laughs> but you were still in pain, so they're trying to find some sort of medicine that would help with the pain, but not cause you to have a rash. And then they gave you the Benadryl, which alternated between ramping you up and knocking you out. Oh, yeah. So you really probably originally were going to be discharged the next day, but um, because they couldn't get your pain in control, we couldn't get you out of bed which means we couldn't get you to walk, which means we couldn't get the fluid off of your body. So we ended up staying just four days in ICU, which really, I mean, four days in ICU is not that long. And we're fortunate that at the Children's Hospital of Illinois, where you've had all your surgeries, that you start in the ICU and you are discharged from the ICU. Oh, that's nice. We had all the same nurses, and when we finally, they were thinking about keeping you because... <clears throat> Your input and your output of fluids, you were out of balance, and that means that you had more fluid in you than you were getting oh. out. They were starting you on some diuretics to try to get those fluids, because you don't want those fluids to build up around your heart and your lungs. But we promised them that if we got you home, you would walk and sit up and do all those things to try to get your body to get rid of the fluid, because they also, I think, pump you full of fluids during surgery. Like Probably. Flu, you know, saline, I don't know. You need to get that out of your body, and we got you home, and I think we weighed you at home a couple of times to make sure yeah. you were losing that weight. I remember being really, like, feeling bloated for at least a week. Yeah. It was not fun. And trying to get you to walk. Yeah. And I had a pillow. That was the surgery that I had a pillow on my chest, because there was a nurse came in for something and put a pillow on my chest, and then it never left my chest until... For a couple weeks because it just felt safer mm -hmm. yeah okay thanks so much for watching if you like this video make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe below for more videos like this and maybe we'll get my mom to come back to talk about my other surgeries and me no or my dad or somebody i think zoe should come talk about my open heart surgeries that she wasn't even alive for <laughs> stay lovely and have a meaningful day